Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Today's episode is brought to you by Pet Assistance First Aid Kits. If you're like me, you love your pet. You take them with you if you can, certainly care for them a ton at home. But just remember that no matter where you are, you are your pet's first responder. Like it or not, you are your pet's first line of care and perhaps only line of care. They depend on you to make sure that they stay happy and healthy. And the people at Pet Assistance have made sure to create a product that will help you do just that. With the help of veterinarians, the Pet Assistance First Aid Kit is a 60 plus piece first aid kit that comes in this handy carrying case. It's a soft carrying case that is meant to be as light as possible. The entire thing fits easily in your car or in any kind of suitcase you're going to use during your travels. The kit contains many bandages and wraps of all sizes for your pet, and it also contains things such as cleaning solution, Q-tips, combs, lancets, and a dog whistle. Here's a list of all the things included with the kit, and hopefully you will find it useful as I have. Remember, pet assistance for the first line of defense for your pet. Hey everybody. Well, today I'm going to talk about this E6, Pennsylvania Railroad's E6. It's pretty legendary, I guess, uh, amongst PRR modelers. I'm not specifically a PRR modeler, but my father was, and he actually had two of these things. They were both Bowsers. He built them, and they were kind of his pride and joy. So I, I can imagine what others felt like when Broadway Limited here announced that they were going to be releasing these. As far as I could tell from the original advertisement and announcement, these were Paragon 4, but they were not brass hybrid. They had quite a few different models to choose from, and like always, they are going to have Paragon 4, which theoretically should have a built-in capacitor, and of course built-in smoke, which I uh, never have. Uh, an end to the fund with. So that's, uh, I went ahead and pre-ordered one. I ordered the Lindbergh Special. I don't really have anything specific attached to these. So I just ordered the one that I thought looked the best. Okay, didn't take a whole lot of waiting. Unlike some models, this one came relatively quickly after the announcement. Let's pull it out of here. And we will see that it, well, we can't see. Let's flip this, there we go. It is the Lindbergh Special, 1927 Lindbergh Special. And again, I just chose it because I like the way it looked. Let's take out the cool little document cubby here. And we can see the Paragon 4 steam engine sounds and functions list. So I can take a look here. A lot of this is fairly standard if you're used to Paragon 3 and Paragon 4, but I will run through them for you. Plus we have to see how this thing sounds. Hopefully it sounds better than the atrocious EA and EB that came out. All right, let's take a look at the manual. Okay, great, makes sense that these things have to be connected in order for this model to work. I can buy that for a dollar. So we will make sure that's the case once we pull the tender and the locomotive out of the box, okay? Fair enough, although everyone I've bought so far has these things connected, so I'm not quite sure all right, no problem. Warnings about using smoke without smoke fluid. Yep, yep, there's a little bit more. So I think um, if you're familiar with any of the Paragon stuff, this should look pretty familiar, especially Paragon 3 and later. And effectively, you know, this is Paragon 3. So yeah, okay, fair enough. So if we want, we can hit F8 while this thing's running and it will automatically hash up, okay. No problem, so we'll put the manual down and we will get this thing out of here. So ah, looks like you got some extra traction tires and a nice driver to take out uh, the nuts. So there we go. Oh, looks very nice. Okay, so one thing I noticed when it comes straight out is it's not black. It's actually kind of a very dark green and so I guess that was correct I, I don't know I've never seen any color photos of this from 1927 so I'm gonna assume they use that really dark Brunswick green or whatever it was so 
Uh, for those of you who know whether that's right, you can let me know down in the comments. And also it doesn't have the Keystone number plate and that's in fact exactly what it looked like in 1927 also. So this one you won't be able to identify as a Pennsylvania Railroad um, steam engine when it runs you down. You're just gonna have to learn that in the afterlife. All right, let's take a look at the details. Uh, again, pretty nice. We've got the rivets here up at the front part of the boiler. Uh, one of the things I always liked about my father's E6 were these spokes, and I think they look great. They look really, really nice. Uh, if you look, the, the running plate down there has a nice texture to it. Here is the rear truck. Looks pretty good. You know, I assume Broadway Limited has been pretty good about their details when it comes to Pennsylvania Railroad so far. So for those of you in the know, you can take a look at this and you'll know. Now, one thing I notice is that the details stand out pretty well, like the rivets here and some of the banding. It's not brass quality, but it's, I would say, above average. Looks pretty decent. I can't see any seams or anything like that, any kind of excess flashing. Looks like the bell here is actually some sort of metal and might actually be brass. So that's a pretty nice touch. Um, there's no, you know, line or anything holding that in. Looks like one of these might be metal, but the other two are painted with kind of this chewy gold paint. Fair enough. Um, those details aren't super duper noticeable from three feet. Let's move on here. It has a nice vented cab. Although I think I'll leave that closed. I'm not sure what that little gray thing is in there, so I'll probably just leave mine closed. The coal detail looks really, really nice. Probably one of the best coal loads I've seen. It has that nice kind of sheen shine to it. I think that's really, really neat. Looks good. Paint job on the tender is very crisp, very clear. So I'm very happy with that. It has, of course, as you saw, it has a the engineer and was a stoker or a coal or whatever he is in there. Um, the rear looks good. Now this is one area of disappointment. There are not a lot of cab interior details. They didn't paint any of these things. This is pretty weak. This is about the same as some of your old River Rossi stuff from back in the day. Although, you know, it does have curtains and everything. So let's go ahead and weigh this and see what we get. Got to get the tear weight here because this is not going to, my scale won't support this whole thing at one time. So we'll plop this down on here and looks like it's over a pound. Let's go ahead and pull this up and then plop it back down again, just to be sure. Yep, there it is. So it's going to be 19 ounces, which is one a pound, three ounces. Let's say, uh, yep, so, and it's uh, just about five and a half, 538 grams for those of you who are elsewhere in the world. Okay, let's go ahead and test the coupler height. Looks like the rear coupler is a little bit high. Yeah, it's a little bit high. It's so chunky though, it may not matter a whole lot, but it's definitely a little high. So you may want to check yours when you get it. I think mine will be okay. Let's check the front one. It has a slight front droop. Is it gonna, is it gonna actually couple? Uh, not quite sure what's going on. Let's see, you know, I'm not gonna double head this anyway, but uh, it's, uh, it seems to be okay. Maybe very slightly high, but okay. Not sure what's going on there. Okay, as far as lighting, you've got the marker lights up front and then the headlight, which also works as the number board light. You can see it here. Turn it in reverse, headlight goes off. Comes back on when you put it back in forward. And we've basically got the inverse in the back. You got those marker lights and the light that comes on when it's in reverse. Pretty nifty, there you go. And there is also a cab light, which is on when the locomotive is stationary. It will turn off as soon as it starts to move forward. So you can see Bill and Gus, or whatever their names are. Okay, I went ahead and began the break-in procedure. The video cuts off a little earlier than I wanted because my camera ran out of battery, but in a good 30 minutes, it was about 45 minutes total in both directions. Okay, let me go ahead and run this in a crawl so you can see what notch one looks like. It's one notch one out of 128.
not super duper slow, but you have to remember, these are pretty big driving wheels. In fact, one of the things I found, I guess, interesting about the E6 uh, when my father had his running around is the wheels look slightly big. It looks slightly out of proportion. Now that I look at them, there is a type of elegance to them, and I know what they were going after here, but they do look a bit chunk in a way. And I think that's one of the things, right? It's gonna take a pretty low geared motor to get this to run at a super duper crawl um, if uh, with these big driving wheels. So it's not bad. It's not like one tie per minute or anything like that slow. And generally Paragon has not been particularly good at slow speed control, but this is acceptable to me, but some of you, maybe it's not. Now I didn't go and tweak with the speed controls at all. So you may be able to use voltage trim or something like that, um, if that's what you wanna do. Okay, up to this point, I've left the smoke unit off. I've left it in soft off um, because I actually haven't even looked to see if there's a switch, to be honest with you. I assume there is, but I haven't looked. But I've left it soft off. I've never hit F7. Um, so now I wanna go ahead and see how long it'll take the smoke unit to turn on and hopefully not how long it'll take to blow up and perhaps blow up. But one of the things I noticed, as soon as I puffed in it, there smoke came from underneath the boiler. I hate this. This has been a hallmark of Broadway Limited's problems. I don't know why they can't get a sealed smoke in it, but it happens again here. I puff into it, and if you look, smoke is coming from underneath the boiler. That's, that's always almost a bad time. Uh, I just, I hate it. Smoke unit's scary. I don't want anything to happen to this smoke unit, but uh, I went and puffed in it again and actually ran out of timer. It took over three minutes for this thing to get running, but once it finally did, it seemed to work pretty well. So yeah, my timer actually ran out, but it seems to be working well, but doggone it, I hate that they don't seal these things well. I have no idea why they still can't get their smoke units running in such a way that they just, they seem to work the way they ought to. Very obnoxious, but at least it hasn't blown up, hasn't stopped working, and it hasn't melted my boiler yet. So I'll certainly take that as a victory for now. Okay, let's go ahead and start programming this. And one of the first things I do is I make it so that the smoke is off by default. You now have to press F7 to actually turn it on. And if any of you are interested in programming this to 460, um, all you have to do is change 17 to 129. So we'll change that. Oh, I'm sorry, 193, I don't know what I said. 193 and then 18 will be 204 so we will change that to 204 and though that combination will make it 460. Alrighty let's go ahead and run through the sound functions so here we go with that. Oh, 
Okay, let me go ahead and take you through a run-up, and I will cut off the sound in the middle so that you can hear it. All right, let's go ahead and test that capacitor. First, we'll do it without smoke. Here we go. All right, 
uh, three seconds and almost four and a half seconds should be plenty. Okay, there you have it. Didn't really make a difference. Okay, in order to make this train, I actually had a bunch of these Bachmans sitting around and yeah, they're not the highest quality. <laughs> there's, I know it's a couple big roof gaps in them, but no big deal. I think they'll look good. And from the photos I've seen, they're very close to the type of heavyweights that this would pull around. So I think it'll make for a nice looking train and I'm looking forward to seeing this thing pull it. All right, let me give you my final thoughts on this and then I'll give you a running session so you can see it in practice. Firstly, it's just a nice model. I think they did a nice job on it. I think they obviously care about Pennsylvania railroaders and that's why they put out so many. Of course, you know, it's it's gonna be one of the cash cows for them, no doubt. And the, the E6 is, I know, one that a lot of people have been waiting for. And it seems to have pretty good mechanics for what it's worth. Uh, it has decent pulling power. I haven't put a ton of cars on it, but certainly pulled as many as I try. I pulled about uh, 12 and it was fine. It has traction tires and it seems to do pretty well. Although sometimes strangely, the locomotive has a tendency to start to shift, I guess, on its Z axis, which is kind of odd, but I don't really notice it while it's running. On a downside, I, I still believe that a lot of people don't like Paragon sounds and question why the Broadway Limited doesn't go with one of the more well-established DCC sound manufacturers. On another note, the speakers, as usual with Broadway Limited, are pretty meh. I, I don't know why they don't invest in better speakers. It can't be that much to have better speakers, which would give them better sound. Granted, this is one of the better BLI Paragon steam engines that I have. But still, there's a lot of clipping and a lot of crackling. Again, better than average, but still worse than it should be. I appreciate that they put a smoke unit in this, but once again, it's scary. I hate seeing that smoke coming from underneath the boiler. Nothing good has ever come of that smoke coming from underneath the boiler. We'll see how this one goes, but it's just the smoke unit's scary. And, you know, the price. I have to admit, um, ugh. I think this has been something that's been going on in the hobby for a while now, where pricing is just starting to get out of control. And it's even worse now with this recession. Not quite sure if this is worth the four plus hundred dollars when I really more see it around a mid to high $200 locomotive at best. Like I said, it's good details. I like all the different lights and everything, but are we starting to be see the beginning of the nominal end for model railroading as we know it? Granted, a lot of people have asked that, but eventually something's going to have to come to a head, right? Essentially, there can't be enough people wanting enough of these things to justify these high prices. I, I don't know. I, again, it just seems to be a bit much for what it is. But I suspect if you have one of these, or you're going to buy one of these, you know who you are and you know why you want this thing. You want it in modern E6 in a well-built, or at least what should be a really well-built package, and you're willing to pay for it. It seems like at this price, though, maybe it should almost be a brass hybrid. I don't know. All right, well, tell me your thoughts. I want to know more about them. I'm not a Pennsylvania Railroad guy, but I know a lot of you out there are, and a lot of you have some pretty strong opinions. What do you think of this model? Worth the almost $500 price tag? Good details, did they do a good job on this in terms of what you could see? Please let me know. Like always, I really appreciate you watching. Hey, I do this, it's fun for me, but I really realized it's even more fun if people get something out of this. So please like, comment, you know, spread the word of this video if anyone's looking for this locomotive. And uh, yeah, it really helps me if you subscribe. It really helps my algorithm. And I do have sponsors. And if you purchase from the links in the description, I will definitely get a cut, so I'd appreciate it if you would do that. Um, yeah, so again, let me know what you think. I appreciate it, and take care. Happy model railroading, and I'll talk to you later. See you.